If you believe privacy simply means stopping creepy apps, then you must be stuck in the past. Privacy means taking control of your own tech before big corporations and governments decide that your privacy is optional. I'm about to show you exactly what you need to do to upgrade your tech for privacy starting right now. At this point, if you believe you have nothing to hide, then you might as well just scroll past because this video will save you no good. And this is even true because some of the things I'll discuss are not that easy to do and you will need some willpower. So let's get right into it. The first thing you need to do is get a Graphene OS or a Calyx OS phone, or you might as well start using a de-googled Android. So this is what you should know. Your phone is constantly pinging servers, collecting metadata and feeding big tech. And this is even true, even if it's just sitting in your pocket, doing nothing. And turning off your location services does not stop Google or Apple from tracking you. iOS and stock Android send background requests to Apple and Google hundreds of times a day, and they are collecting your location history even without GPS, um, your app usage habits, which apps, how often, how long you use them, um, the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi activity you have, detecting nearby devices, your network connections, who you're communicating with. Your easiest way out is ditching stock Android and iOS for a Google phone. You might try Graphene OS. This is the gold standard for privacy. Or you could also use Calyx OS, which is easier to use than Graphene OS, but still 99% tracking free. These will strip Google out of your phone at the operating system level. That means no hidden telemetry, no background tracking, and no forced Google Play services. Number two, ditch Windows and Mac OS for a privacy respecting Linux distro. No matter how many privacy settings you tweak, Windows and Mac OS are built to track you. Windows 11 sends data back to Microsoft even if you disable telemetry. It logs every search you make, even your local searches in the file explorer, um, your activity history, even when you opt out of it, and of course, unique device identifiers tied to your Microsoft account. Mac OS is no better. Apple's gatekeeper system logs every app you open and sends that data to Apple servers in real time. So switching to Linux is your best bet. Unlike Windows and Mac OS, Linux isn't owned by a corporation with an incentive to track you. It's also open source, which means that a lot of people are picking under the hood to be sure it acts exactly the way it is advertised. I would suggest Fedora KDE for a polished modern OS that respects your privacy out of the box. Or you might also use Linux Mint for the easiest transition from Windows. I actually put Linux Mint under the microscope and documented all the traffic it may or may not be sending. So you might click the card above to check out this video. You may also use Tails if you need serious anonymity. And this one is actually designed for whistleblowers, journalists, and privacy advocates. The third thing you need to do is replace your browser and rethink password storage. Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and even Safari track you constantly. And incognito mode only means people using the same device do not get a hold of your browsing history, your cookies, and other temporary data. Google Chrome builds a detailed profile on you, and it tracks your browsing history even in incognito mode. Every site you visit and link you click, your search queries, which are tied directly to your Google accounts. Edge does the same thing, and Safari is just slightly better. So, you must upgrade to a privacy-respecting browser. Use Hardened Firefox with uBlock Origin and Privacy Badger, or switch to LibreWolf, Tor Browser, or Mulvad Browser. These are all privacy-focused browsers, and an option like Tor will offer real anonymity. You might check out my tier list on privacy browsers. Number four, encrypt your backups the right way. And please go beyond BitLocker. 
If you have encrypted your laptop's drive with BitLocker, 5 volt or locks, you are not entirely safe. Here's what most people forget. Cloud backups are not private. So if you're using Google Drive, iCloud, OneDrive or Dropbox, your data isn't really encrypted. These companies hold the decryption keys, meaning they or a government agency can access your files anytime. BitLocker isn't foolproof. On Windows, BitLocker relies on TPM, that's the trusted platform module, which Microsoft can remotely disable or weaken through updates. And external hard drives are an easy target. So if your external backup drive isn't encrypted, anyone who gets their hands on it can read everything. So your best approach is to always encrypt before sending data to the cloud. That way, even if someone hacks your cloud provider, your files remain unreadable gibberish. I will recommend Duplicati or Restic. These are two excellent open source backup tools that encrypt your files locally before uploading them to any cloud service. Number five, de-Google your network. Simply using a VPN and a privacy-focused browser does not mean your online privacy is private now. With a VPN, your device still queries a DNS server to translate website names into IP addresses. By default, this is controlled by your ISP, Google, or Cloudflare, all of whom can log and track your browsing habits. And to be honest, even private DNS options aren't truly private because you are only trusting another company to handle your traffic. You may rather host your own DNS resolver instead of relying on third-party services. I love to recommend Unbound, which is a lightweight DNS resolver that directly queries the root DNS server bypassing third-party DNS providers. You may also try Pyho plus DNS over HTTPS. This is a powerful ad blocking DNS server that stops hidden trackers across your entire network. When it's combined with DNS over HTTPS, it encrypts your DNS traffic for extra privacy. And finally, for number six, you need to kill biometric logins and replace these with a hardware key. Face ID, Windows Hello, and fingerprints unlocks are very convenient security features, but biometrics can be forced. So unlike passwords, you can't refuse to provide your face or fingerprint if someone compels you to unlock your device. This could be a law enforcement scenario, it could be a border crossing, or even a mugging. Also, you should note that not all laws protect you. In many places, courts can force you to unlock your device with biometrics, but they cannot compel you legally to enter a password or passphrase. So advanced deepfake technology can bypass facial recognition and fingerprint data can be cloned from high resolution images. The safer option would be to switch to a hardware based authentication method that requires your physical presence, but can't be easily forced. YubiKey is the most popular hardware key, widely supported for passwordless logins and two-factor authentication. Now, as additional privacy steps, remember that if you're stuck using Windows but want the most privacy-hardened experience possible, consider these options. You might try Windows LTSC, which is the long-term servicing channel. It's a stripped-down version of Windows that removes bloatware, telemetry, and unnecessary tracking features. Also, you can try custom Windows installs. So you use tools like NT Lite or, a, or an unattended XML file to create a fully debloated Windows setup before installation. Also, in most cases, the real privacy concern is between the seat and the computer. You may follow all the steps that I have listed in this video, but still use applications that are known to invade your privacy. I talk about 13 programs you must never install on your computer in the video with the attached card, so you might want to check that out. But of course, there are more than 13 programs you should never run. The general point is that if an organization or program has a history of privacy breaches, 
you should stay clear of such applications. I hope you have learned something from this video. If you have found it helpful, please be kind enough to share it with someone else that might like this kind of content. And of course, please like this video and drop your comments. Tell me if there are some things I have left out and tell me your privacy precautions in this big 2025. Till the next one, stay safe out there.